Okay. Hello, everybody. So nice to be here at NDC Oslo. My name is uh, Carl Solgor. I work as a senior consultant at a company called Novacare. I'm uh, currently on uh, parental leave, so I need an excuse to get out of the house. Therefore, I'm standing here. Um, I'm going to show you my at-home Kubernetes cluster built with recycled e-waste, as one normally does when on paternity leave. Uh, we're going to go through some of the motivations behind um, making a Kubernetes clusters at home. Um, we're going to set up K3S on, uh, on my machines, and we're going to talk about some of the experiences that I've, uh, that I've had building this. So e-waste is a significant environmental challenge. A total of 154,000 tons of e-waste was recycled in Norway in 2022, which is about 28 kilos per person. It's good that we recycle, but uh, uh, still a lot of e-waste lies around in Norwegian households, dusting away. So how can we turn some of this waste into something useful? I like to draw some similarities to Dr. Frankenstein. Uh, uh, we're reviving old laptops by reusing their logic board to create a home lab. These laptops pack a similar punch to many modern single board uh, computers. Today, we're not just recycling. We are going to create a monster of efficiency and sustainability that breeds new life into what once was considered electronic waste. And hopefully it won't attack the village in the end. Uh, speaking of monsters, this is, uh, this is a picture of my home lab in its prototyping stage. Uh, my wife uh, is embarrassed uh, that I'm showing you this, um, but I'm actually quite proud of it. Um, so how do we tie these computers together and create sort of a coherent unit? We don't want to manage each single one computer, that would be uh, difficult. We can use something called K3S. I'm going to try to explain Kubernetes in one sentence, so wish me luck. Uh, Kubernetes is a highly configurable platform for managing and orchestrating containerized applications across the cluster of machines. So basically it's just containers just scaled. And K3S is just a lightweight variant of Kubernetes uh, designed, to, um, designed for resource efficiency and simplicity, which makes this a good fit for this kind of build. Now, how many lines of code does it take to set up a K3, K3S instance? Any guesses? Just one. This takes about 30 seconds to run and will set up your machine as a K3S control plane. This command is also configurable to suit any of your needs. Uh, so if you want to disable things, you can do that with a command line argument. This is a basic overview over the relationship between my machines. I'm going to install one control plane and two worker nodes. Worker nodes, they execute uh, the actual application workloads, running the containers that contain your applications, while a control plane has a, is just, 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 just exactly the same as a worker node, but it has an added role of managing the cluster, handling all administrative, administrative tasks, such as scheduling applications and maintaining their desired states. Now, we have a few machines here. This is um, on top um, with the control plane. It's a Dell Latitude from 2013. It has about uh, eight gigs of uh, RAM and 3.7 gigahertz, eight cores. I have two workers, one HP Pavilion with four gigs of RAM and two gigahertz with four cores. And the most exciting, uh, a Microsoft Surface Pro, uh, which is running Linux. So that's, that's kind of fun. Once you have everything set up, you ha should have something looking like this. These are all the machines that are in my cluster. Um, it shows information like um, CPU, memory, everything that's available, and also the added role that you have uh, in within that cluster. 
And to rectify the image that you saw earlier, I have a 3D printed rack that uh, looks janky as all hell, but it's, uh, it works. <laughs> Now we do have some, um, I do have some work in progress. Not everything that I wanted for this talk uh, came to fruition. A colleague of mine encouraged me to add phones to the mix. I found this awesome project called Postmarket OS. Now this project, it installs a fully fledged Alpine Linux distribution on the phone. Now my Galaxy S8 is not officially supported, but I've gotten some signs from the open sorcerers of the project that it might be supported in recent build. That, I mean, th this was four days ago, so I haven't gotten the time to, uh, to add that. And also I have um, plans to add a NAS and connect that to uh, the volume provi providers. So it's a work in progress, really. I'm not going to go through the entire rundown of all the applications running on my home lab. I pick a select few. It's uh, AdGuard Home, which is a, a DNS level uh, ad blocker, which is really nice. Everyone should consider having this if you like privacy. Um, I also host my private blog, a uh, personal blog, uh, on Blog Solgard Solutions. I also have Home Assistant that Troy Hunt mentioned in the beginning uh, of this. Uh, of this conference, uh, you don't you don't necessarily need to have a Raspberry Pi to do such a thing. You can use an old laptop, and it will work just fine. And I manage everything in something called Flux, which is a GitOps technology. So everything, every YAML, every configuration is stored in Git. Now, talking about power consumption, this cluster draws about 30 watts. Uh, I measure this with something called Kepler which is an open source uh, project designed to measure uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, applications. And that equates to about 16 kronish, or 1.5 uh, US dollars, um, which I believe everyone can afford. Uh, just for fun and the uh, spirit of comparing apples to oranges, the minimal free tier on an app Azure uh, Kubernetes uh, service would be a monthly cost, at least what I found, of $35. And then you get a machine with one virtual machine and four gigs of RAM. So uh, at least that's something to, to think about if you want to self-host. Uh, some of my services is exposed to the internet. I have, uh, and it's publicly available. I achieved this using something called Cloudflare Tunnels. This requires no port openings on my network, it's just a simple configuration. Mapping the services to the given DNS. Now, I've, uh, I've tested my blog site with something called K6, which is a load testing tool, and it handled about 10k requests made in two minutes. So I think that's pretty good for just handling something of a 10-year-old laptop. I also posted this blog um, to Reddit, and it didn't get hugged to death, as they say. Um, it handled about 70k requests over a few hours, so it's pretty performant. So, we don't really need to throw away our old hardware. It is still usable. It's a good idea to check if uh, you can still reuse this to run some home automation or any kind of thing that you want to achieve in your house. It's a good way to learn Kubernetes and to have the bragging rights of having a Kubernetes cluster running at home. And all your friends will love you and you will finally be enough. <laughs> Thank you, NDC. Go check out these uh, links. These are just blog posts and also the configuration. So thank you so much. <laughs>